Welcome back. We're making brunch this morning. Yes, we are. Who's heard of Postdoc? Postdoc Horseman. Uh, from Netflix, no? No, no. absolutely not. Uh, Patrick Ryan from Firehouse Bakery. He knows what Bostock is, and he joins us now. He's going to tell us. Uh, what's Bostock? Yes, so basically it's a bit like, it's a fusion that's, uh, between French toast and a lamb and croissant. Love so a the fusion. I, the idea is you're, you're kind of using some, you're kind of using it leftovers, you're kind of using stale bread. Okay. We get an ultimate kind of French toast. So ideally you're kind of using a loaf of brioche. Uh, richer kind of the bread, the better. Like sure. if, even a batch loaf would work perfectly fine if you okay. don't have access to one. Um, yeah. Now this, is, this loaf's a little bit different. Now it is made out of croissant dough. Oh, so it's wow. a croissant loaf of bread. Delicious uh, already. Oh yeah. Boy. And you said that it's better to be like stale, yeah. a little bit harder, a couple of days because, old. Because basically cause what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a little rum syrup, so which we're going to soak it in it. Okay. Assuming I can turn this on. Mm -hmm. We were chatting earlier on uh, about Ray and whether he was um, a genius in the kitchen or not, and you were saying that you found, actually similar to what I find, baking to be quite tough. Yeah, I'm, uh, to be quite exact about the measurements, and yet still have a bit of arti like a bit of arti artistic expression. Excuse me. Yeah, artist ar artistic expression is my problem, definitely. And, and the fan, I, I always blame the oven. We have a fan oven in our house, and for, for you were laughing at me when I uh, said it, I blame the oven for uh, my bad baking. Yeah. Uh, so I just go to a, just I should just, just do what Patrick. your customers do and just go to the Come to me, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to you. Yeah. Uh, but no, seriously, this this could not be any easier. Okay. So we'll make, a, we'll make a little rum syrup. Yep. So mm. very very simple. We got like 80 grams of caster sugar, um, 50 mils of uh, water, and about 40 uh, like two shots of uh, rum. How many shots? Or two. two shots. Oh, it's just like 14. 14 <laughs> shots of rum. It's <laughs> like this is gonna be a great and show. Two, and two in there. Okay. <laughs> right. So when it comes to your bread, basically we want a good generous thick slice. About right. an inch. So very simply then. What uh, if you didn't want to use rum, or you need to use no, rum? No, basically we just want to, because it, particularly in the bread, as it kind of gets stale slightly, it's going to dry out. So we want something that's going to give it a bit of moisture. So even just a little simple uh, sugar syrup is perfectly fine. A little few spice, you don't have to use the alcohol. Okay. okay. No problem at all. So for this then, we also want to make a frangipan, which is like an almond paste, which you'll okay. find in your Bakewell tarts. You'll find it in the center of your almond croissants. Sure. Right. Which uh, Ray is going to take care of. So very simply, we got 100 grams of butter. Yeah. We're going to add in 100 grams of caster sugar and mix it really well. Is that that's softened, all of is it? Room all temperature. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah, just make your life a bit easier. Okay. It's really cold trip in the fridge. It's going to be a little bit harder. With our little rum syrup, then you just want to bring it to a simmer just to help dissolve the sugar. Yep. Okay. And so it's going to burn off a little bit of that alcohol. Okay. Sugar in, butter in. Yeah. Uh, and that's it, is it? Oh, we'll that first. In individually, okay, where's me? Where's me now? Okay, right, okay. Are these fairly time consuming to make, or when you know what you're doing, you can. No, I can just the frying pan will keep three or four days in the fridge. Oh, well, works absolutely fine. Um, the syrup takes two seconds. You just want to bring it to, um, bring it to a simmer. And then you're just taking you know, loads of bread. So that's grand, is it? That's what we're looking for. Right? Yeah, and you can drop in one egg at a time, quite okay, quickly. Okay, leave it on, okay, one egg at a time. <laughs> then we're a little brioche, nearly <laughs> straight in for our rum syrup. Let it soak up. There we go. Oh, it looks like So you're just dipping it in, you're not letting it soak overnight or anything? No, no, no. Just. Okay. Then tip over. Yeah, and you might need to scrape down the side. Yeah, I was going to say, yep. Yeah. So the flavour wise, you can really kind of play with anything you like. Mm -hmm. uh, with this one, we're going to go a little bit of sliced banana, just a very thin layer. So who came up with this inventive um, recipe? So it would be a kind of a classic French pastry. Okay. Um, so you'd see then, them in the patisseries around France. You've got your traditional croissant and pan au chocolat, and then this is the fancier stuff. I suppose it's uh, the idea. It's kind of probably been a bit, a little bit thrifty, kind of, because you don't you know, it's reducing kind of wastage, really. Yeah. Like you often kind of find a loaf of bread, a couple of days, you've still got the end bits left over. So it's just a great way to kind of use it up. So just a thin slices of banana across. Now again, as I say, you can really kind of play with the flavour combination. If you're not a banana fan, feel free to chop and change. How's that coming along, Ray? I'm doing good, some good work here. Two eggs, all yeah. by yourself? Well, the second egg isn't in yet. Oh, one yeah. egg. Only one egg, mummy. <laughs> now you can go <laughs> second egg. Did you turn that off? No. Did you? <laughs> I put it on it, can I? I know what it is, yeah. It's a bit loud, It's just under my nose. I have no idea. And this is almonds here, is it? So grand almonds then, eh? Does it help to bind everything together? So okay. You set the speed and you can drop the almonds in. Okay. Ground almonds, okay. Yeah, and then if you have a little bit of almond extract, just to give it an extra little kick, two or three little drops would be perfect. Okay. okay. I do like almonds. A lot of people don't. Divides opinion. Uh, I don't mind. Yeah, sure, I'll have to try that. Try it once. Try it. Look at this. So once it kind of comes together, yeah, you can see is there. it good? Yeah, that looks good. great. Right. Absolutely perfect. Thanks, man. Yeah, I just. You know, 
Something so, I whipped together while I was on the telly this morning, you know? You so you're so find, lucky going yeah. home and roasting If you pop up. it in the fridge, you'll find that it will tend to firm up because the butter kind of sets. So just let it sit out a and little bit. And is that what you want? Um, it'll just be a little bit harder to work with. Okay. So let it sit at room temperature a little bit. Just make your life very, very easy. Okay. okay. So then, with our frangipan, which is just so my head ready. Okay. See, this is where. Oh, so that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, fine. No, it will once it kind of firms up. Yeah. Than that, but it's not. It's the kind of nope. creamy sort of consistency. Yeah. So as I say, your kind of your classic bake well is it exactly the same feeling that would go into it. Okay. Oh, is it okay? So then. Mm -hmm. Now we're just going with some blueberries. Now again, play with the flavors you like. Do you like the spoon? No. <laughs> you do. No so. Uh, uh, blackberries are starting to come into season. Oh, that'll be lovely. You can yeah. really just kind of play around with. It. Like a great one come Christmas time, you could have a little bit of mince meat, you could have the almonds baked on top of it. It'd be a lovely one to serve. Like a little and that topic's quite spice. sweet, so it's okay to have. Yeah, just want to get a nice little, little balance, just kind of a little sharpness. Yeah. A few little flaked almonds on top, just kind of give it a bit of texture and crunch. I mean, this is a meal in itself, it's enormous. So you will kind of find as it bakes though, because the, um, the, bake, the um, frangie pan will start to kind of ooze and melt off, but it bakes onto it. So oh, literally, wow. they would take about 25 minutes to bake at about 180. 180, 25 minutes. Okay. okay. Which then, this would be so impressive uh, if you were serving this for brunch for mates. I was, yeah, because uh, uh, in our house we invite people over on the weekends to, to the animal house. <laughs> to the crazy Oh, house. wow. So this is, the, this is what happens to your Frenchy Pangy. Yeah, so it kind of oozes and spreads all over it. Mm -hmm. So very simple. Then. And come here now, some people wouldn't have like a brioche lying around the house or a... Uh, but yeah. if, if you, like, like with a you, sliced pan, do you? Not really, like, it needs not to be really. a good quality loaf of bread. Okay. Uh, like a batch loaf is right. great, because it's got that little bit of richness uh -huh. to it. I suppose the idea of a brioche, is, it's got that little bit of indulgence, it's got mm. that added extra butter. Yeah. Um, what about, because you made that with croissant, croissant, Pastry. What yes. about a croissant from yesterday or leftover from the last yeah, couple of Yeah, it, it would work the same thing. Basically, you could like almost twice bake it, just kind of cut it open and fill Slice it the exact same half. way. Yeah. So all so it is is a little carrier. Lovely, OK. A little dust of ice and sugar. That I could do now. Easy, yeah. And then um, we're just going to finish it then with a little bit of mascarpone cream. So there's a, just mm -hmm. mascarpone, vanilla, and whipped cream and a tiny bit of ice and sugar. OK. This is one of your brunch staples, proven very popular with people down the firehouse, isn't it, Patrick? Yeah, we introduced it kind of a couple of weeks ago and it's kind of it's been going down really well. I suppose I'd say we all deserve a little bit of indulgence. And do you get the taste of the rum? Well, you're going to taste it now and you're going to find out. OK. My husband's watching the show this morning and I just received one text. That's my favourite rum. Oh, really? The brand of it, is yeah. it? Yeah. I've never heard of it before. Sure, I wouldn't know anything about rum. <laughs> Other than, you know, drink okay. it. Take your nose out of it. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, well, just and there <laughs> is our little... Look absolutely beautiful. It serves warm, yeah. absolutely great. But it will sit in a couple of hours perfectly fine as well. Okay, but ideally Bye, serve it warm. I'm off. I'll uh, see you later. <laughs> bottle, see you tomorrow. Bottle, bottle of rum and a frangy pangy. Uh, Looking right. forward to tasting this. Have a go with your bow stock. Right, give in. Bow stock. We think. We think. <laughs> Bostock, Bostock, either way. I've been called, people have been texting in calling me oh, wow. a, a hungry Bostock. I didn't realise it'd be this moist on the inside. Look at that. Yeah, it's so just the, the, that rum syrup so contrived. The bananas kind of break down uh, and then you kind of get the crunchy almond oh, top. Oh, I'd say it's delicious, is it? Mmm. Oh my. Oh, it's so divine. Oh, you cheeky beggar. Very sweet. <laughs> That's lovely. Mm. Okay. Just a well. cheeky swig now. <laughs> yeah. This is gorgeous, Patrick. And actually quite easy to do. Very easy. Well, for you. Very good. I'm going to dig in. You read away there. Patrick, Absolutely thanks so lovely. much. I want to have another bite. Why well, can't you, you can't. read? Um, you can get the full recipe details, as ever, on our website. Or, of course, you can save yourself the bother calling to Patrick in the Firehouse Bakery to try everything for yourself. Lovely. Sorry. <laughs>